Hey, good afternoon, Kyra Hall. It's Mr. Fan from the Shed Studies Department, and we're here with All Day Hall Day and another cooking episode. Um, but you probably noticed I have a couple of friends with me today, and these are Kyra Hall alums, the Bon Tempo Brothers. Right next to me, we have Jerry Bon Tempo, class of 09, and to his left, we have his brother Dan Bon Tempo, class of 12. And besides being Kyra Hall alums, they're actually part of a family business known as Frank's Pizza and Pasta, and I'll give a moment for them to talk about it. Yeah, got it. How's it going, guys? Good to see you again. Uh, so yeah, my dad started our little Italian pizzeria uh, back in 1985. He came over from Italy. He uh, just started making pizzas and then uh, started making Italian pastas, all recipes that his mom taught him. And uh, I've never had any other job. I've just been <laughs> making pizzas my entire life. And honestly, I love it. Yeah. So if you ever get a chance to go to Frank's Pizza and Pasta in Overly, you know, you're going to get a good home style family Italian meal. Honestly, you also probably get to see the Bone Tempo Brothers, which is worth the entertainment value alone, okay? Well, thank um, you, Mr. Kim. <laughs> but one of the reasons I invited them, um, besides their cooking expertise, is like they kind of epitomize what we think is important at Calvary Hall. And it's just not just the education you get in the classroom, but the relationships you have, right? That's why we're doing this fundraiser. Um, I've known Jerry and Dan since they were at Calvary Hall and they graduated. You know, one of my fonder memories is when Jerry used to come by after the school day and talk to myself and Mr. Miserandino in the show studies department. Dan played rugby for me for a little bit there and just getting a chance to get to know them and find out like those are the important families at Calvary Hall. So, you know, as always, we're going to actually make a donation um, during this time frame and to support Calvary Hall and all its future alums. But as a little incentive, the Bon Tempo brothers have agreed that we'll take all the donors from this time frame, this hour cooking session. We're going to put them in a raffle, and then we're going to give the winner of the raffle a gift card to Frank's Pizza and Pasta. Right? Yeah, you can come down and see us and get some good pizza or pasta. What's the uh, recommended dish? Uh, I would go with just the New York style pizza, or probably maybe the Mama Rosa. Yeah, the Rosa is definitely one of the best. Ones a good one. It's like a nice pink sauce yeah. with uh, chicken shrimp and crab meat, a little farfalle pasta. Right. And you guys do a couple uh, specials each night, right? Yeah, we do. We run specials on Tuesdays. We've been doing that since 1985. You get two 16-inch cheese pies for $18.98. We have our spaghetti Wednesday, okay. two spaghetti dinners. Any chance we get to see Armando cooking, or is he uh, just relaxing now, leaving everything to you guys? He makes guest appearance. He comes in. He's not taking care of his fee. Other than that, he comes in and you know tries to slap a pizza together just to make sure he doesn't stay. Just He's got to keep it authentic a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So Jerry mentioned pizza. So we're gonna have two recipes today. Both of these are, in our opinion, pretty affordable. The ingredients for either one are probably under $20, $25. I'm gonna do a clams casino. Um, I'm gonna do it with bacon and some clams you see here and peppers, um, a little more shallow wine. Um, and I am gonna finish it off in the grill. This is what I consider a good recipe for if you're going to, now that we're all been vaccinated and getting a chance hopefully to get back together. If you go to a summer cookout, something really easy to bring. You can also cook with Italian sausage, but I'm going to leave that for a little bit later. And then you guys are doing a pizza, right? Yeah, we're just going to make a pizza. Now, pizza, you, you can put whatever you want on it. Um, we're just going to start off with a, I get the sauce with a cheese. We've got some uh, beautiful mozzarella cheese. <laughs> some sauce right here, all yeah. homemade. And then maybe some pepperonis. I think Mr. Fan, uh, he yeah. likes the pepperoni. I do like the pepperoni, yeah. And maybe a little bit of sausage. What kind of, you know, pizza, it doesn't really matter as long as you just uh, kind of commit to it. Right. It'll turn out good. Yeah. Are, are we going to find out what's in the uh, secret pizza sauce or is that family secret there? That's definitely proprietary. However, okay. we, we're going to make, uh, give you guys an example of what you guys can do. <laughs> or you can just come down to Frank's and purchase some pizza sauce. <laughs> Smart man here, right? That's exactly why we have them. All right, so we're going to start uh, prepping and get ready to cooking, and we'll go from there. All right, so Cara Hall, so we're going to make some clams casino just to get an idea of the ingredient list, which you already have and was sent to you, okay? We have our bell peppers. We have red, orange, and green today. We're going to have jalapenos because, you know, I love to have a little heat in it. We're going to use bacon because you never go wrong with bacon. We're going to use bacon fat to cook most of this stuff in. Obviously, we're going to use salt and pepper, and, of course, we have clams. Um, I'm cleaning the clams right now to get the salt off of it to make it a little easier when we steam it and we use it afterwards for presentation. And then our secret ingredient is going to be more shallow wine to deglaze the pan. And of course, when we serve it, we're going to have a little orange. Now, I mean, lemon, excuse me. I will also today use panko breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese a little bit later, so you'll see that as part of our mixture. Okay. So I'm going to start prepping and I'm going to let the Bon Tempo brothers talk a little bit about the uh, pasta dough, um, pizza dough, excuse me, what they do. Okay. 
How's it going folks? Today we're going to make some wonderful pizza dough and then ultimately some beautiful pizza. All right, let's take it from here, Dan. We got some flour right here. We like to use some King Arthur bread flour. It has a 12% protein content. That'll, uh, that basically means the gluten. It makes it uh, stretch as opposed to using like a all-purpose flour. It will, when you begin trying to stretch the pizza and tossing it, it's going to tear. But the, glute, the high uh, protein content will help bind that and make that gluten structure. So do you want higher gluten count or lower gluten? This is, gluten you would like a higher one. Okay. Like this is pretty good. 12% is good. 12, 13 is good. And you're recommending bread flour? Yeah, I like to use this. We like, we use this at the restaurant, the King Arthur, Arthur baking flour. Okay. It's like no bromades and it's unbleached flour. Okay. So good all natural flour. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about some extra virgin olive oil. We need that. Making dough is pretty simple. It's really just what you, just some basic couple of ingredients. It's been the same, it's been like the same thing years, for yeah. a thousand years. Yeah, olive oil. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Fan. Some yeast. We use the instant yeast. Some sea salt. And a little bit of zucchero, as they call it in Italia. Italy. Uh, they call it sugar. Uh, there you go. Oh, sugar? Like table sugar? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sugar. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And, and water. Of course, you need a little bit of water. All right, so I guess uh, from now we're going. You got anything you want to add? Uh, mix it up. All right, yeah. Well, we'll start making it. And um, piece it together. As you guys are making, I'm just gonna ask a few questions, okay? So go ahead and do what you need to do, okay? Um, but I guess my first question is like, how exact do the measurements have to be? Like that's something I always worry about when I'm, you know, when I'm doing any type of dough. Yeah, that that is more important with dough because it you'll notice it at the end. It'll either be too sticky or too soft. Okay. The temperature of the water is a big one. Okay. And um, cooler yeah. water. We need uh, depends, depends on the time of the year. Yeah, time of the year because it depends how hot it is in here. Oh. Like in the shop, we do different temperatures. If it's the winter, we're going to use warmer water. And if oh, it's wow. the summer, we'll use colder water because the uh, temperature inside is never the same. And then if you were to turn your faucet on in the winter time, right. it's going to run colder faster. Okay. Yeah, are, we, are we worried about humidity or anything else like that too? No, no let's just talk about making dough okay. right now, like if you were to make it tomorrow. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah fire away. Yeah, if it, well, that's it. But if like big bread companies, they have rooms that stay the same temperature. That's why they do it. But in your own house, it's different times of year. And depending on how fast you want the dough mm -hmm. to rise, that's a that's a thing you got to consider also. Okay. So yeah, good. Mix up here. Cool. I'll take it from here. Thanks, Mr. Daniel. We're gonna add um, this is a one teaspoon of uh, extra virgin olive oil. I'd say add about a teaspoon and a half. So are we doing dad's impression here or a pomando? <laughs> or I uh, think it makes him cook better. Too. Okay, yeah, they make it cook I kind of talk to myself in an Italian accent. Yeah, that's his alter okay. Italian accent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to put on some music. <laughs> no, we don't need any music. That or we really help How much uh, yeast are we gonna use for these things? Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Mm-hmm. Okay. And while he's doing this, that, I'm going to rinse out. Sure. Fast. Um, you're probably yeah. noticing that I have started to rinse up the peppers here, right? And I did steam some clams already, okay? So I just need my steamer. I'm getting my bacon going. Um, and this is going to be my bacon fat, which we're going to cook everything in. I'm going to also mince up the clams a little bit, and that will be part of our mixture in our bind there. Yeah, that thing called for Okay. So let me ask you guys as you're cooking, like give me one Calvert Hall memory that sticks with you throughout everything. Hmm, there's too many right now. Yeah, keep them clean, keep them clean. Keep them clean. Okay. Kosher. Um, yeah. I remember my first one was literally the first day of school was sitting in, uh, I think it was Mr. Thomas's I had him for a homeroom and then my brother popped in <laughs> and started making uh, all noises. Noises. my little brother oh, okay. and all this stuff. and. Of course, being like a freshman, not knowing anybody, I was embarrassed as hell, and he just laughed, walking away. Yeah. And that was definitely the literally the first memory. Do you guys still do uh, freshman mentors? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Thomas was my mentor. Uh, Mr. Thomas, legendary. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was on Mr. Curran's NFL list the first oh, year. Oh, yeah, yeah, not for long. <laughs> yeah, not for long list, but I don't know. Everybody kind of helped me get my act together. Yeah. Well, Mr. Thomas would come yeah, into the yeah. He would come into any classroom I was in and go draw a big O on the uh, chalkboard. For overly, if I didn't get my act together, that's where I was headed. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna stay at Cameron Hall, I think. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Thomas was uh, pretty legendary in that time. He'd take care of everybody. So we got olive oil in there. We got olive oil in there. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. 
two and a half teaspoons of salt. You say I was loyal to a brown to crust. Okay, I have a little bit. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to steam the rest of these corns here. And Cat Hall, don't worry, at one point we will be outside with the nice weather. And we want to make sure we do that, okay? So I'm going to say something here, okay? Is that right? So if you take a look at the water, you can see all the sand come off of it, right? But if you want it to be extra clear, obviously you're going to rinse this under cold water and clean it that way. But this is exactly why you want to kind of just clean your clams. If you notice it, it's a little bit more shinier, looks a little better. So the presentation's back when we serve these and we put them back in their cell, it just looks a little bit more, how should we say, delectable. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I'd use that right there, Mr. Grandma. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's good word use, right? Yeah, that's a, probably a vocab word. <laughs> All right, yeah, so then we're gonna do two, uh, two teaspoons of sugar. So right now we've got the yeast, we've got the olive oil, the salt, and the sugar. I like to take uh, my gloves, give it a little pre-mix. Smart move, keep the kitchen clean in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. Gloves, a little safety and hygiene. So when, during the pandemic, takeout went up dramatically for you guys, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. we did well. We are doing okay. That's good to hear, that's good to hear. Water. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. So as we're prepping here a little bit and talking about all day holiday and those things, um, so Jerry taught him for class, right? Had mm -hmm. you for history, right? Yep. Um, Dan, I coached. Okay. Um, I remember Mr. Mid was teaching Italian. Yes. And did you take class with him? I took a time with Mr. Ch Mr. Uh, Miz for sure. Yeah, it was a little cultural mm -hmm. aspect of it, right? Yep. And then let's see here, what else would you have uh, taken there? Um, probably, who'd you have for math? Oh, then for math, I definitely had. Um, who's your favorite math? I know I had Miss Deets. Oh yeah, yeah. I had Miss Deets my freshman year. Okay. And then, yeah, I don't, really, I don't really remember, honestly. I may have had Mr. Blake, too. I think I did. You probably had Mr. Blake. But I like to hear him more in the lectures. He would always crack me up. <laughs> Mr. Blake is a funny guy. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, Mr. Blake is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Who else did I have? I had Mr. McFart Mr. McFartland. Oh, uh, for history? Yeah, okay. Good. Um, Mr. DeBricky. Yep, religion. Good. Oh, yeah, he cracked me up. How about uh, English? English, I had Mr. Greco. Oh, fellow Italian. Yeah, you failed me. <laughs> do, do, do you have a Mr. Greco impression? No, honestly, I don't. I oh my God, that, that is my favorite now. <laughs> if I talk to students, if they can get a Mr. Greco impression out there, you know. What I, mean? I had Mr. Uh, Zinkan. He was pretty yep. cool. He's still there. He's a soccer coach. Yep. Okay. And then I also had Mr. McGrogan. Yeah, legendary. Who, I, I love Mr. McGrogan. I'm not gonna lie. Legendary. Yeah. He, his demeanor just commanded respect, I would say. And he knew he what he was doing. Yeah, I forgot what he, he didn't call us by our first names until we got our ring junior year. Really? Seriously. That's kind of a cool little thing. Yeah, yeah that is. I didn't understand it. And then the next day we got our rings, we came in and he was like, started calling me Jerry and mm -hmm. Bobby or whoever was next to me. Okay. And we all looked at each other and he could hear us whispering and we were like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. He said, well, you guys got your rings, you're men now. Like, oh, all right, well, thank you. You felt like you arrived a little bit. I did. That's yeah. cool. That's very cool. Mr. Yeah. Grogan, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's that water in there. So. Yeah. So right here, what did, what did we say? It was about six. No, six. No, it's uh, about two and a half, two and a quarter cup of water. Two and a quarter cups of water. It was lukewarm, lukewarm water. Lukewarm water. Yeah. So I put that in there. Once again, give this a nice little mix. You want to definitely mix all the salt, sugar, and everything together in the water. Got it right here.
Mr. Fan, I should come over more often to cook together. It's kind of fun. <laughs> now that the, uh, like I said, we're all a little vaccinated yeah. and safer and stuff, I don't think we can do this real often. There you go. All right, so we're going to go with six cups of this good flour right here. This dog always gets leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> Leo has a good life in that sense, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, he just turned six, so he's still a puppy, though. So six cups, huh? Yep. Okay. I know Leo's excited. Yeah. Cooking bacon. Yeah. Yeah, you can smell the bacon. Mm -hmm. Permanent smell in this house. All right, cool. So this is just about ready to uh, hit the uh, good old mixer pretty soon. Okay. So we want to take it over there in front of the mixer. Yes. Get it going. Okay. So, a little bit of a mess here. Here's a little bit. Yeah, let me just rinse this dog off for a sec. Little twist in there. There's only two speed, I think, right in. Yeah. It goes up to 10 speed, but that's a key thing. You want to make sure you put it on low. Exactly. Because in the shop, sometimes, you know, someone might leave it on a high gear, and if you start mixing dough, right. it turns into a winter wonderland. Yeah, and you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be dusty. So you're telling me that you need a little patience to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just pay attention right. for this part. Okay. And that's it. Just when you turn the gear on. Just some pro tips, I'd say. No, absolutely. Well, that's honestly why you guys are here, right? Like, so I think people of all different times, especially during the pandemic, started making their own dough, everything from sourdough to whatever, um, trying different things as far as cooking, you know, pizza and stuff like that. Like, I started playing around with it on the grill and different ways to cook it and stuff like that. But the thing is, you know, I'm not doing this every day, so I'm trial and error. But my trial is going to be an error in the sense that we're not going to have dinner. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so we, we try to make sure we do it correctly, but because I'm a little, always a little hesitant when I play with it. So, patience is a good but thing. But that's about. the thing with pizza. Even if someone buys a frozen pizza, everybody has their own little touch, like their okay. own way of doing it. Okay. Like everybody does that with pizza, like you were saying earlier with uh, how you put it on the grill. Yeah. Like everyone has a different thing that they do with it. Okay. So, what are the different things with pizza like I'm a little bit obsessed with now is a white pizza okay oh yeah um, yeah you know and just put a little bit of olive oil if I can get some sun-dried tomatoes a little basil um, some fresh buffalo mozzarella that type of stuff that's the way to do it yeah I also like a lot of garlic on it I mean, yeah. a lot of rich garlic. it's not a white pizza unless you got the garlic yeah uh -huh. that's a good thing so we're gonna Yeah, you want me to give you a towel? Should I get that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got plenty of these guys here. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, my freshman year, I came in and I got to experience the uh, the old cap, and then my sophomore year, we were in our lunch. Our cap was the auxiliary gym. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then now, then by the end of sophomore year, I think that's when the new cap was built. How is it? Uh, they changed anything? Or? It's a different experience. Um, dining hall, dining hall. That's the first thing, right? Right. It's called dining hall. Um, that's the first thing. Um, you know, full service. Obviously, um, during the pandemic, we've had a little issue with it, but um, we have Shage as our um, Shage as our food service or whatever, and guys can get everything from pizza to sand, um Handmade sandwiches um, with different ingredients, all like however they want to. Yeah, the paninos were my favorite. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous how um, how crazy it is and stuff like that. I mean, everything's prepackaged right now, but during the uh, year, it's not pandemic that way. And then they swipe card everything. Yeah, we did have a swipe now. The first yeah. financial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we do a swipe card with first financial, which means that you know people don't have to worry about carrying cash as long as they fund it. A little financial literacy there. Do they still uh, offer parfaits? Because I was—I used to think I was the parfait king. Huh? 
Oh, the park bays are there. Yeah, um, Oreo park bays are the big one. That, yeah. that was my, yeah, that was my orange, lunch. Yeah. yeah. Dan did a couple other things with some salads and um, some seasoning and stuff. My dentist actually told me to take a break. I was, I was close <laughs> to getting a uh, cavity, but I didn't I was, I listen to his advice. <laughs> so speaking of which, <laughs> so tell me about the uh, dough here. So with the dough, uh, so this is this dough is a dough that's been risen. Uh, usually you want to wait like 24 hours. It's just what you get like a perfect dough from. Okay. But uh, this dough, let me see if I can scraper. This is one that isn't that fresh. That if you push down on it, you'll see it rebounds oh, pretty quick, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That that just shows it's not ready. And then this one, if you push down on it. You okay. see how it kind of stays Got like it. that. So that when you shape it, it will hold the shape. It'll better. hold the shape a okay. lot better because everyone's probably done dough that it's just not done yet. It stretches and then it goes back to what it right. was. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what he was talking about with the gluten content. In okay. it allows it to stretch a little bit better. Um, do you need a time frame to wait a little bit, or just you could probably keep it out for like four hours and then put it in the fridge? You kind of want to push on it, see how it's getting a little bit softer. Like this one's almost ready. It's getting okay. softer. And then you want to put it in the fridge so it'll finish out in the fridge. Okay. For, Dude, if that one's finished, I might as well bring it over here. We'll cut it up and show them how to roll a dough Yeah, ball. yeah, that's another part that then we can we'll show you. Yeah. How to cut it up and roll it. So we, oh, so we use the bacon. We got the bacon fat. We're going to let that sit here. We're just going to put our peppers in there, right? And get that going. Okay. And of course, if we're going to do that, we need a spatula of some sort. So we'll do that. Okay. So, um... Dan, you were asking about me, like if I was like cooking or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so my dad owned a restaurant. I grew up cooking that way. Uh, but honestly, my mom was a better cook in the family. Go figure, right? Every mother is, right? Yeah. In that sense. Um, and my mom, when she cooked, she never measured. She never did anything. That's what I was going to ask. So yes, yeah, everything's touch and feel. You know what yeah. I mean? So the clams are done. Um, and it was amazing because like I got so used to watching her do this, right? That I never thought it was anything different. And then <laughs> the first time I was actually in my dad's restaurant and cooking, I was kind of doing some stuff that I had learned. <laughs> and my mom actually was in there too, and she was cooking. She looked at me, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm cooking. She's like, no, measure that out. I'm like, with what? <laughs> with what? <laughs> you know? So we had to figure it out and stuff like that. But that was my first real like lesson that like, you know, yeah. It's touch and feel, but when you're uh, when you're serving at a restaurant, you want a little consistency. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So what we're gonna do is uh, we'll get the peppers going for a little bit here. Uh, when it starts to dry off, I'll throw some uh, Marcella wine to deglaze. Okay. I got my clams are all done, so I'm gonna let these guys kind of cool down a little bit. Right. And what do you know when they're done? They, they open, right? Yeah, they open up exactly. And you'll notice they turned a little white in that sense. Okay, I'm just going to put that down to help them cool down a little bit. But yeah, so the shells and everything are white and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. All right, right on. Hey, what, what's going on, guys? Gary here. I'm trying to bake some pizza with you. Teach Mr. Fan how to stretch a pie. So it's very important now to take your flour. Make sure you make, you make a mess of your counter, but it'll help you out in the long run, trust me. All right, so we're gonna wanna take our dough ball, right? We're gonna look at this thing as a circle, and it is, and we're gonna attack it from four lines. We're gonna build basically a cross, right? That's the way I like to do it. And I also build myself a fat crust just because I love thick pizza. Anyway, so we're gonna take one um, right towards you. You're just gonna be pushing. What you're doing right now is pushing the air to the crust. All right, give it a spin. This is your second line towards you. This will be your third line towards you. Now your fourth line towards you. You can flip it over. You kind of use your one hand, your uh, my left hand is my non-dominant, your dominant hand. You kind of build the crust a little bit. Go around the circle. Give it a nice snack. Oh. And then uh, just kind of toss it. You could practice using it like a kitchen towel. It moves somewhat the same way as dough does. Just want to stretch it a little bit. It should be good from here, I think, guys. What do you say? You kind of want it to so. look like leather. So if you had to toss that. What's the thinking here? Oh, like, yeah, tell, you tell know, me about that. If you want to toss it? Yeah. 
that headphone doesn't do it over a counter, so when you drop it, but that's the thing, <laughs> like, his thing, he always tosses it to see how round it I is. I like to toss it to see, if it's, to see if it's round. Oh, to see if it's round. Well, if it's not it, round, if it's, it's not round, round yeah, she's, this is a And this is a good go. example. Look, if you if you rip a hole in it, which you probably will, right. is you want to just, you can just flip back over and push it around. And when you go to put sauce on that spot, mm -hmm. you kind of want to, like, if you have your ladle, I don't know where we have our ladle at, but right. just let's use an example like this. You want to put the sauce all the way around, and we, like in the shop, we'll move Smooth over that so it's not sauce on that spot. Right, right. And that's like a little thing. And also is, like, your dough, when you scrape your dough up and it rises like this, mm -hmm. like this is how it rises, that's the top of the dough and it's smoother. The bottom of the dough, you can see how it's kind of like airy. Right, right over yeah, there. Yeah. So you want to make sure that this is going to be your bottom. Oh, okay. That's important. That's going to be your bottom. bottom. Okay. The top of the dough will become the bottom. Okay, that's interesting. So, so you flip it, basically. Yep, you want to flip it at the end, so it's going to be smoother, and it'll just be a lot more even Coffee. all the way across. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the better part. So, show me again how you spread out this dough. Let me see it. Is this one ready to go? This, this one is. I'm going to grab one, and I'll show you. Remember, so everybody who's making a donation during this segment, right? The, the, we're going to take all those donations, we're going to throw them into a raffle, and the person who gets pulled from that raffle will be if you go to Frank's Pizza and Pasta and uh, enjoy a meal in the Bon Tempo's here. Okay. And I think uh, a little entertainment value, like we said, they'll show you how to toss a pizza yeah, or everything else like that. that. Yeah. So, a good way to do it, everybody will push it out differently. The main thing you want to remember is you want to just keep a crust on okay. it. So, a lot of people do. Uh, there's 20 different ways to make a pizza, but the best way I like to do it is you take your fingers and put your fingers together, and when you push it at your crust, you can also, when you pull it towards you, you roll up the bottom of it. Okay. If you see that, and then you push it out, and then you come towards yourself, and you don't push it all the way out, you never want to push the air out of your crust. Okay. Because then the sauce will run over. And oh. You can, you can spin it, because that's how you make your crust, is you kind of push down hard right before it, and then you just come out and you want to push some of the air out, but never on the crust because that's what you kind of keeps it. like a little swimming pool. Yeah, okay. exactly, for the right. sauce to stay in. Okay. And you can go but ahead. So the air bubble here, do we worry about that at all? It anything? depends if you like it. Some people okay. like uh, bubbles in their pizza. Okay. Some people don't. We, we'll we we'll pinch it in the shop right. just so more consistency, so it's right. not one pizza, a huge bubble on the side. Okay. And that's, you kind of look at your crust, you kind of gauge it if you're like, okay, I like a big crust and that's good. Right. And then you want to make sure you do exactly what you did on the other side. Okay. okay. So you do the same thing. You can do the same thing like this, where you just push around, you kind of feel it, and just make sure you have a good crust there. Okay. And some people take their hands like this, mm -hmm. and they kind of pinch Push it. off against it. Exactly, to yeah. make, make a better crust. And the other key part that uh, Jerry mentioned earlier is you got to make sure you got flour on it so it'll, it'll spin nice. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to start to stick. Okay. And then um, after this part, you want to pick it up and you kind of smack it back and forth on your hands. But when you do it, you, you'll spin it. So it'll, Plus you turn it a little bit. Guys. Yeah, you turn it a little bit each time. And this kind of, it works its way out and stretches itself. Okay, so gravity's yeah. taking over at you right there. Yep, sure. yep. Right. exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. And you can tell because uh, when a dough's risen all the way, it stretches real easily. Yeah, okay. And some people, like, if you want to use a rolling pin, you can definitely use a rolling pin. Just don't go over the edges too much. Okay. And an easier way for at home, if you want to stretch it, is you just want to put your hand on it and, and only do the edges. Okay. If you want to do it like this, okay. where you pull it and you only do the edges. Okay. So that's a good way. And then also, if you want to get more advanced with it, you use just your knuckles under the front of it okay. like this. Where you can kind of see how it's right underneath. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you stretch it, but you stay away from the middle. Because all oh. the sauce will run to the middle. You want to stay on the edges. Okay. And then you're going to have pizza with some flour. Yep. Okay. And then, like everybody does, you shape your grill. You can make it an oblong pizza right, or a right. perfect oval. But that's pretty much the basics. Just remember that that top side goes down. Okay. Just a lot easier like that. But Are you saying that's it? Friend, you want to try tossing one? <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna make my little turtle hand, right? Yep. And you, want, you want to bring your hands like that and okay. come towards you. Okay. So and I'll kind of lay them flat. Yeah, exactly like that. Okay. And then that's good. And then see if you can spin it. Yep. Okay. So and, come that. Yep. And come towards you. And get close to the crust, about a quarter inch from the crust, half inch. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And it's mainly it's all about feeling it. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Yep. Perfect. 
Yep. Okay, so, 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 and okay. you, you see where the crust is. When you see yeah. where it's like that, you can kind of push down around it. Just don't touch your crust. Perfect. And then once you get to the point where it looks good like that, you want to flip it and do it on the other side. Yeah. Yep. Dang, Perfect. Mr. Fan, if you need another job. Yeah, you work <laughs> weekends. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, perfect. I think you like got that. something we could work with. <laughs> you hear that, Carol? <laughs> There's my retirement plan. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, and then at that point, I'd say start to either, you can bring a rolling pin in at that point, but mm -hmm. if you're confident enough, I think you're doing a good job, you can kind of start to stretch at the crust. Yep. Let me turn around this part to like this guy's got This side's got like ignored a little bit. Yep, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, you want to find those spots that you feel are a little bit high, okay. and you and you can bring them down some. Okay. Do you ever like just pinch up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, you can. That's another trick that people use is they pinch it to make the crust. Okay. I'll do that a little bit. Yep. So perfect. I like my pizzas a little smaller. Okay. Right. And not too thin, but I definitely am more like a New York style thin crust type guy. You know. If you want thin and less bubbles, just keep pushing out the pizza, and that'll take some of the air out on it. All right, so now at this point, if I wanted to stretch it, right? If you want to stretch it, mm -hmm. you can either stretch it on the counter where you okay. put one hand and this hand kind of follows that one and you want to make sure it's floured right. pretty good. So that's the one way okay. where you, you keep one hand at the top and that hand kind of leads. So it pushes out like this? Yeah, yeah. You want to kind of spin the pizza as you go, exactly like that. But this, your right hand is going to move a little faster. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like that. And you I gotta use see. fingertips, right? Yeah, you can use fingertips. Yep. And you can kind of feel it stretching a little bit. Yeah, I do actually, yep. yeah. I feel like though, like I'm avoiding the middle too much, you know what I mean? You want to avoid okay. the middle because the okay. middle will naturally stretch away when you stretch the outside of it. Okay. Yep, perfect. And then a good way to check what you're doing is you want to pick it up. Okay. And you can pick it up, put it under your knuckles and kind of look at Am it. Am I putting this part of my knuckles or yep. the other side? This part. Okay. Right there, because so. it's going to be a little grippier. And you want to stay as close to the outside. Yeah, you can drop it a couple of times. It's fine. And you can kind of look at it. Like, if you hold it up, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. It. And you that's can kind cool. of see how you can start to see light through your spots. It's yeah. more translucent. That's yep. a, oh, you I can see. see. Yeah. You can kind of see where you're at with it. Okay. Perfect. And I'm just pace, passing from knuckle to knuckle almost. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you'll feel it start to stretch. Yeah. And, um, yeah, definitely just like that. Yeah. And perfect. Voila. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. And then from here, you can play with it to make it a perfect circle, an oval to fit the oven pan, however yeah. you'd like to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think obviously at the shop, you guys have to make it more oval to make it more consistent, yep. so yeah, like different exactly. than pizza. For me, you know, if I'm at home, I kind of like an odd shape, an oblong and stuff right. like that. Um, because then when I add a topping, sometimes this skin gets a little bit more like sausage, yeah, yeah, sauce yeah. and stuff like yep. that, and thins yeah. out a little bit, yeah. So it's just like, it's a little bit of a difference each way and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Very Perfect. Good. So, Carol Hall, so our peppers are nice and cooked through, right? So, you guys should probably see that here, okay? Um, I'm going to actually deglaze a little bit. I'm going to put a little of our Marsala wine in here. Maybe about a half a cup, if that, right? And that's going to cook down. Okay? Um, and you'll start to hear it sizzle and stuff like that. I usually wait and just make sure I get all the brown stuff, right? So, now my pan's becoming nice and clean, etc. And I'm going to let that cook. And as that cooks, it'll get cooked down. And then before it cooks down too much, I'm gonna throw the clams, which I've already taken out of the shells and minced up. And we got a little liquid in here, so that'll add a little bit more liquid. Clam juice obviously adds to the taste. Um, I like to have everything in the pan at once. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty much a one pan person. If I have. Yeah. Easier clean up, but you get all the all taste. flavors. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. in the pan, that's a big one. Yeah, and uh, it, it cracks me up like every once in a while I see someone cooking, they have like 15 pans out, I'm like, Dude, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, you're all gonna combine it anyway. Yep. So I've gotta have the taste here and everything else like that. So at one point, I'm gonna let this go a little bit. It'll cook down, you know, probably to about half of it is. Then I'll throw the clams and the juice in there. And I'm gonna start to add a little Parmesan, um, just a little bit for the salt and the nuttiness, etc. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, we're pretty much ready to go to throw on the grill. Um, to this I'll time- I put the little grill, should I not have? No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. And at the very end, um, we're going to top off with the bacon. So I'm not going to add the bacon in here now, but I still have the bacon juice in there. Um, so we're good. And we'll have our clean Perfect. Yep. Okay. So, Tower Hall, we're ready to stuff the clams a little bit, okay? So, you know, we just took a couple minutes, take the peppers, 
and clamp the seal there, all right? You can see that. Um, you can see the pan is pretty much clean of everything, including the liquid. There's a little bit, but that's fine. You see that kind of looks like you need a little bit more like that. Because when we throw it on the grill, okay, it'll take care of the rest of that, right? I'm going to get this out of the way. Whoops. Thank you. And the final parts of this, okay, is, of course, a little bit more cheese. Always have enough cheese. Nice, gentle going over. Okay. I'm going to take some panko crumbs, okay. And any type of breadcrumb, I just like panko. Um, right. I think it has a little bit more crunch to it. Um, yeah. And then the final thing, okay. Take some bacon here. Hopefully the dog doesn't get any of it. <laughs> I'm just throw some bacon on top of it. That pouch is really Pull some of the part. Oops, that one's going to be. Of course, you know, when you put this on high heat, the bacon's going to sizzle and cook. So that will help you kind of finish off some of the cooking a little bit there. You get some, you get some, you get some, you get more. I think they should, looks like they should put Clams Casino on the new lunch special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we're out on one of the breaks or something. So this is ready to go on the grill outside, okay? Um, you guys got your pizza ready? Okay, okay so... I think we're ready. We got our, all our stuff ready to go on the grill. So we're gonna take this off. We got our charcoal going. Um, of course, we got a grate, right? So we gotta oil the grate. So we're just gonna use olive oil here. Um, people at home might wanna use a brush or something like that, but I just went through, okay? Um, I would suggest, yeah, you get a little flame there, that's good. Make sure you grate a good part of it. And then what we did is we have our two zones. We have our hot zone and our kind of softer zone, okay? So what we do, let's take a piece of pie. I'm going to throw this out of the way. Okay. Let's see if we can get it on there. So which one do you guys think you want to try to throw on? This one right yeah. here. Right there. Let's keep it a little smaller so it gets the whole surface. And we'll obviously. Right in the colder zone, right? No, do, go do the hot zone. Oh, actually, do cold zone just to warm it up for a second. And then we'll, we're just going to have to move it a little bit. Right? Mm -hmm. So we'll put this on there for one minute or two. So obviously the biggest issue when anytime you grill is watching it. Um, I, I have been known to throw stuff on the grill and talk to people and forget about the food. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. shocking. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> when would you say so, Elizabeth? Just a couple of burnt dishes that turned into takeout. Dishes, okay, but it's, it's all good. We like a little crush, a little taste. Right. It's fine. You, you know? like yeah. a little bit of crust. So we'll let this go. And then I, I would say... You know, within two minutes, we'll probably just rotate it, so all parts get, and then we'll throw it on the hot part of that shot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I got a couple minutes to kill here. So uh, let's see here. What else do we talk about, Calvary Hall? Um, we got favorite teacher. We got favorite class. Okay. We got a uh, good memory. Um, how about you know friends that you still keep in touch with from Calvary Hall? What we uh, I still keep in touch with all my buddies. Okay. Honestly, we don't see each other all the time because we're kind of all spread out. Right. But we still talk for sure. Okay. A whole bunch. So who who's the one that person surprised you the most about what? <laughs> What they ended up doing. Hmm. So I know Chris Hahn just got married, right? Chris Hahn got married. Okay. Um, Chris Trader did too. That shocked me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't really know. Honestly, okay. everybody kind of did their thing. did their thing, and they they got a good life. Okay. okay. What about you, Dan? Not too many shocks in that regard. Everybody kind of did what they said they were going to do for the most part. Okay. But um, yeah, definitely still keep in touch with most of the guys that I met there. Yeah. Definitely brotherhood, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, agree. Absolutely. I mean, I think about, you know, um, just people I've met and been fortunate enough and, you know, still keep in touch. Right. Going to okay, so we got this guy a little hot, right? I mean, it's pretty. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to flip him a little bit? Or just get it to the other side? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. And you can see we got the little bit of crust right there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No. Let's see if we got and then once we do that, should we throw, you want to throw it on the all full heat that way? And yes. then we should get ready to go. Okay, so we'll do that. So this guy will be ready, and you're gonna we're gonna want to turn it a little bit, right? Okay. Turn it, yeah. yeah. You let me know when you want to turn it. No, you, yeah, I, I think we're pretty good right now. Yeah, let it cook. Let it, let it cook a little bit. Um, actually, we'll do this. So the thing, only thing I don't like about cooking a pizza on the grill 
is the temperature, right? But the oven that you guys have, what's the price then? Like 800? Uh, uh, between 550 and 600. Okay, 550 and 600. But we have to do the same thing because the heat comes from the back of the oven. It's a gas oven. Okay. So you have to spin the pizza about halfway through. It takes seven to eight minutes. Right. It's just your standard, like a, like a bakery deck, like right. a deck oven where it's got a right. slate stone. Okay. The stone heats up. The flame comes from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like my brother was saying, it hits the stone, but it also goes up from the back of the oven. Right. Where most of the heat is, so obviously the back of the oven is the hottest spot. Right, so that's why you like have to spin the pie. So that's why like a brick oven it cooks so much faster, yeah. right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's like so much hotter. Sometimes 900 to 1,000 degrees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll see them sometimes they cook it in a brick oven uh, just to cook the bottom, and then they kick it up and take it to the top. Right. The top's super hot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Move it over. So I love it when it bubbles up like that. Heck yeah. Like that's like one of my favorite things about it. So if you get the bubbles, don't you want to push with your fingertips so it'll leave a lot of air in the dough. So just push so it down like that a little bit. Or when, when, when you're making, it. When oh, you're okay. stretching you it, were like going, this. you were going right in. It's perfect. It. Okay. It'll okay. make it'll allow some bubbles to form. Um, so yeah, I know like in a brick oven, you get the temperature gets a lot hotter and they throw the heat source all the way far back as yep. they can, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then like you said, like they move stuff around and. Um, I think the big ones, like the, the coolest part is up front on the right. Yep. So they'll have stuff there ready to go and yep. they just rotate it through or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you'll yeah. see at the end that they'll pick it up to the top of the oven because all the heat's up there. Ah, uh, finish off the top. top. Yep. The top. So it's almost like um when they, uh, like if uh, you broil it, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yeah. exactly. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this guy here. Uh, it smells good, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it does smell amazing. Can we, we rotate a little it? bit more? Yeah. Or you want to flip it? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. What? Watch yourself. Do you want me to put it all the way on the uh, full heat or keep half of it off or stuff like that? That's it. Get out of this right now. Just like that for a second. When are we going to add the uh, sauce and the cheese? Whenever you're ready. You tell me. Yeah, I'd say we need to give this a, I'd say we, this a try soon. We'll the cold side when we add the sauce and okay. cheese so that Matt has, uh, has time to melt. Yeah. Let me turn this guy here so I can get yep, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, let me go get another pan for you. Or do we have the other metal pan? Yeah, we this, got the metal pan. Okay, so do you want to put this on that sauce or you want to do, you want to do it on here? Have at it. And this is another thing with our sauce is that we don't cook our sauce until it goes on the pizza. So it's only cooked one time. Some oh. places will cook it first. Or oh, they keep it like in a pot or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but ours cooks on the pizza. Okay. So, without getting into too much detail, tomatoes, tomatoes, uh, garlic powder, oh, salt, sorry, pepper, okay. basil. Basil is a big one. You gotta have basil. You gotta have basil. Gotta have basil. Gotta have the basil and salt. But sugar, it's to everybody. Some people like a sweet salt. Some people like ours is sweeter. Okay. And we, we put more sugar. I'd say for this part, probably put the lid on it so it melts. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we want the top to get hot a little bit. Put the basil at the end. I'm going to put a piece of two in there. Some flavor. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. This is the part where everybody just has fun. They make yeah. whatever they want. Some people like extra cheese. Because this is silly. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That looks done to me. What do you guys think? Oh, I'd say it's ready, Mr. Yeah, Fan. Oh, yeah. Do this here. Put that yeah. All right. Let that cool down for a sec. Okay, you can smell the crispiness, right? And then I'm gonna throw the clam casino on there. And while we're eating that, okay. all right. So we may add a little pecorino. Yeah, please. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So if we had to cut this guy here, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you guys want to cut? Or you want me to do it? Show sure. back. Okay. Just watch yourself. I would say here. Yeah, Hold it so you don't flip yeah. that pan over. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Eight or you want to do six or you want to do four slices? Eight. Eight, yeah. What's that? I want to hear the crunch. Yeah, I, I want to hear the crunch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get some hot red pepper flakes too. Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, you gotta get that right there. 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 Yeah, you gotta get that that crust right there like that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you got a nice piece. It's good flavor. Mm. I love that crunch. Dog knows what he wants. Maybe for Olivia, you'll get a slice in a minute. I yeah. better. I filmed this entire thing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we'll pay you pizza. <laughs> Please. Yeah, get made in pizza. Oh, yeah, those look good, too. Those look really good. Okay, we're going to yeah, move all this stuff off. Stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. Can't oh, we forgot about that. that. Yeah. So we'll put that there. We're gonna let that cool for a little bit. Okay. And if you want to, um, obviously you could do the grilled one thing, right? But you can broil the uh, the clam casino mm -hmm. in that sense. Right. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad on the grill. So, um, cheers. cheers. Cheers, I guess uh, the Italian um, phrase we should be using for cheers. Centano. Centano. Yeah, is that it? years. Mm. Dog's got the right idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Clean up crew right Always there. Always die. Always die. All right. So, oh my God, this so hot. We gotta wait for this to cool down a bit. Let's see here. Get these guys too. Get that cold. What do you look for for them to be done? Mm. I just look because I undercooked the bacon a little bit. Um, this one's obviously closer to the heat source a little bit, right? right, you know right. What I mean? But just to crisp up a little bit, and then you can see everything's kind of tightened up. There's no like almost no liquid visible. Right. So if you're looking at this guy here, you can see. Okay, it's lost a little bit of coloring, but that's the idea there. Right. Okay. So, so here you go. It's not too hot. Okay. And just slurp it down like a shot. Oh yeah. It's not too hot? No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is good. Mm. I like the little oil there at the end. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, play. You know. yeah. oh yeah, that is nice. Mm -hmm. So um what do you think, Calvary Hall? Anything you guys want to add before we go? You gotta try the clams. Yeah, you missed your fan to make you guys clams casino. That's the way to go. That's it. So make sure you guys go to Overly, Frank's Pizza and Pasta. But this was another um, all day holiday cooking segment. I'd like to thank the Bon Tempo boys for joining us. <coughs> Thanks for having us. Um, like I said, always good to have alums come back and help out. Um, remember, if you can, to donate. We got it all day for uh, another couple hours for this. And um, just hit the donate button, all right? Thanks, Cabra Hall. Take care, Thanks. guys. Thanks yep. for watching. All right, so we talked a lot about relationships, right? So who are we doing this for? People like my son, Andrew Fan, class of 21 here, okay? Yeah. Xavier, class of 25, but uh, obviously I'm pretty proud of him, but, you know, he's totally a product of Cabra Hall education. Um, in that sense, you know, he's going to be a man of intellect, a man of faith, and a man of integrity, but we couldn't be more proud of the education he got. And, you know, everybody who's donated in the past is helping him to get to where he is today. Um, you guys probably recognize my daughter. She's helped me cook in the past. She's going to be part of this cooking segment always, okay? Uh, but, you know, my daughter, uh, unfortunately, cannot go to Cabra Hall. But okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. we're also very proud of her um, and just want to let you guys know that this is what the relationships we talk about when you send your kid to Cabra Hall. Yeah. Anything you want to say, Andrew? Just a thumbs up? Yeah. yeah. How did the AP go? Good so far. <laughs> so anyway, man of few words. Probably smart that way. All right? Thanks.